The 25th anniversary of the Outsider Art Fair will be taking place January 19th to the 22nd at the Metropolitan Pavilion here in New York City. But what exactly is Outsider Art, you ask? Well, here to tell us about this exciting movement in the art world is Outsider Art Fair owner and gallerist Andrew Edlin. Andrew, welcome. So great to have you here. Thanks for having me, Tanya. First off, I sure, I'm sure you're asked this question all the time. What is Outsider Art exactly? Sure. All the time I'm asked. <laughs> Outsider art is work that's made by self-taught artists whose art is not filtered by a formalized art education. Um, it, they, they don't go through sort of the indoctrination that is picked up at art schools and they're not part of the art system where an MFA student is typically out there looking for studio space and gallery representation. With Outsider art, the audience is not even really part of the equation. And how is their art often discovered? That's a very interesting question. There's always, almost always a third party involved because these artists were not making for the market or for any other reasons that were external. Right. So there's always a neighbor, a family member, another artist that sort of discovers the work and is so excited by it, but they're like, oh my God, I have to show this. I have to get this out into the public eye. And then bam, it's out and people love and then, it. So right. Andrew, it's interesting to me because the obviously the Outsider Art Fair has been around for a quarter century. We're That's celebrating right. the anniversary. That's right. You acquired it in 2012, That's relatively correct. recently. So That's right. what brought you to Outsider Art? Well, I was in the food business actually in the 80s and 90s working for my dad. And uh, amazingly, I had an uncle who was my dad's younger brother, who had started making art late in life. And because he was deaf since he was born, he had no facility to really approach the art world or the art market. So I was very taken with the work, and I took some, and I walked around Soho in the mid-90s, and I walked into an art dealer's uh, gallery, and he was like, oh, this is great. This is outsider art. And that was the first time I heard that term. This was circa 1995. And he directed me to a gallery that was very well known in the outsider art uh, world, who's still doing our fair, American Primitive Gallery. And the dealer loved the work. He put it into a show. Uncle Paul sold 14 pieces, and Holland Cotter wrote a glowing review in the New York Times. So, and a star um, is born. Yeah, he was 66 <laughs> and was an isolated guy, and it really changed his life. And then through the, that uh, paradigm, I learned about the outsider art world. That is an amazing story, mm -hmm. really, truly an amazing story. And the Outsider Art Fair is full of amer amazing stories. Absolutely. And you brought some examples I did. here. Tell us, first of all, about this Bill Trailer that you have. Well, Bill Trailer was born into slavery in 1854. And at the age of 85, in the late 30s, he was making these drawings on found pieces of cardboard with pencil on the street of Montgomery, Alabama. Incredible. And a, a, a pref professional artist named Charles Shannon saw the work and was really moved by it and helped Trailer for the last few years of his life make work. And in the early 80s, there was a major show at the Corcoran Gallery. And since then, the work is part of American cultural history. I mean, he's uh, his work has been shown at the Whitney, correct? Well, at the Whitney. It's in the permanent collections of the Metropolitan Museum and MoMA. And in the waiting room upstairs, there are and Dow two, Jones. There, <laughs> Dow Jones owns two pieces, <laughs> as I was learning. So it kind of is no longer outsider art, really, right? And this is going to cost you $200,000 if you well, want to go home. Well, you know, it is outsider art because even though this work has entered the hallowed halls of the art world, that has nothing to do with the, uh, the original circumstances in which it was sure. made, where Trailer was poverty stricken, he was on the streets, he it's was homeless. It's a great homeless. story. And so now the proceeds of his art go to who? His family members? Well, well no, there's no family members involved, but there, there's a, it, now the work is in what we call the secondary market right. where it's been sold and then collectors bring it back to the dealer and gets right. resold again right. and through auction and resale the market just keeps appreciating. Too bad he doesn't have descendants. Well, you know? a, a piece like this was probably seven or eight hundred dollars when it first entered the market. Amazing. All right now tell us about this beautiful Susan King. That you Susan Takaharangi King is actually from New Zealand and she is 65 years old and her work was discovered in an interesting way. Gary Panter who's a very well-known contemporary artist saw some images that her her family posted on Facebook. Wow. And Gary told Chris Byrne, who was a, a well-known curator and one of our dealers at the fair, and he was so enamored, he got on a plane to Auckland. And uh, we first showed this work uh, in 2014, and the New York art world, the press, just went crazy. And she's a living artist, She's right? a living artist, but she's very severely autistic. 
She can't speak, so she's very isolated uh, in many ways. And what's so mysterious and exciting about her work is the quality of the drawing is so refined and her interior universe is so complex that it's sort of left to us to try and interpret what she's trying to communicate. Because, because she's, she can't speak. She can't speak. Can she write? She, she can write a little bit, but she doesn't make eye contact with you. She stopped speaking when she was four. So some of the excitement about outsider art is that it's really up to us to interpret and surmise what the artist was trying to communicate. Fascinating. You, and now what will something like this cost? This is $6,000. Right. She, she recently had her, her first museum show at the ICA in Miami. Mm -hmm. And uh, MoMA right now, the acquisition committee, is considering acquiring some of her work. Incredible, right. incredible. Now you also brought a very interesting type of comic book. That's right. This is, this is a comic uh, a book, a series made by someone named Frank Johnson. And this is also really a good example of how this kind of work by self-taught artists gets out into the public. So this is the original copy? This is the original copy of a comic book called Wally's Gang. We found out that Frank Johnson was an itinerant musician in Chicago and between 1928 and 1970 he made this series of several hundred comic books where the characters actually age and it's an incredible reflection of the culture of America that was uh, that was occurring at that time. And what did he do with these comic books? He just they they he just kept them. He never showed them to anyone, as far as we know. How and were they his, discovered? His step grandson was contacted by a curator about 15 years ago, and then between now and then, the work sort of got to a dealer, and now for the first time, they're going to be presented at the Outside Art Fair by Chris Byrne. And he's no longer artists. living. The artist is no longer. No, Frank Johnson is right. not around. Incredible stories, incredible art, and how much will this comic book? Well, cost? each of these comic uh, books, which have you know many pages yeah, to right. them, are about five thousand dollars. In a case like this, it's more typical that a collector would be interested in acquiring the a set or the whole set. Would you ever think of publishing these? You know, printing them up and you know, them? there's actually something that might happen at some point. Would be that uh, a library, a university library, sometimes the Library of Congress, who sees something this is a really part of American cultural history sure. will get involved and, and provide the funds for something I like see that, that John Jacob Astor is one of the characters yes, there. So fascinating. Yes, Can't yes. wait to, uh, to, to read more about it. Andrew, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure speaking to you about this fabulous art and the stories behind each piece. Well, thanks, Tanya. And we encourage everyone to come down to the Outsider Art Fair, which opens tomorrow at the Metropolitan Pavilion. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Okay.